What's up everybody? My name is Russ with RWGResearch.com. Today I've got MI5 here, aka MI5. And basically I've asked um, I've asked him to tell me about these pieces of equipment that he's carrying with him. So he travels, takes measurements of these alternative energy devices and tries to figure out what's going on. And I think the most important thing about working with alternative energy is measuring what you're doing. I've even fallen into the trap many times, failed miserably and took taken bad measurements and tricked myself even with a good oscilloscope if you're not careful. Um, so MI7 is kindly going to take the time to explain each one of these instruments, what they're good for, and along the way I'm going to ask lots of questions and hopefully by the end of this video at least you'll have an idea of the kind of pieces of equipment that you need to do real measurements, not just analog meters and simple digital mate meters. Those things in certain applications work fine, but in many pulsed or AC applications, you cannot do that unless you truly do power factor calculations and all this kind of stuff. So, um, MI7 doesn't want to be on film, which I'm happily okay with, but he is going to kindly show us all this stuff. So, let's get started. You ready? Hell yeah. All right. All right. I've got MI5 here and uh, these lovely toys. And I think what I'm going to do first is just ask some basic questions. So I know for myself, I've tricked myself even looking at some of the rodent coil experiments and looking at input output on analog meters. And they truly do show you a result. But you have to do the power factor calculations and then you realize that actually those are the correct voltage and current but when you add power factor it kills it so I guess just explain to me the simple things that you've done that have tricked you and then tell me like all the other possibilities that you can think of that you need to look out for when taking proper power measurements from your uh, understanding because again uh, I don't know how expert this is going to be. This is just going to be what he's learned. Tell me. Okay, so the first thing to say is that I've measured over Unity so many times uh, on all sorts of different devices and every single time I found that I was making some type of measurement problem. The biggest problem comes with measuring AC as Russ said and so you kind of need a range of tools to be able to uh, understand exactly where what power levels you're actually dealing with. The first mistake that I found, as Russ has alluded to, is using the current meters, uh, RMS meters for example, to do AC measurements um, with voltage and current. Fine for DC measurements, no problem pretty good for um, low frequency, sort of 50 hertz, uh, maybe a little bit above, but they don't consider any power factor between the voltage and current, so you're not actually sure how much power you've actually got. And so uh, when you step into AC, and particularly as you go higher in frequency, you need increasing amounts of specialist equipment. So um, one of the biggest problems I found is uh, not so much voltage measurements, they're a little bit easier, it's the current measurements which tend to have tripped me up a lot more. And also the frequency you're operating at. And also the settings you've got on your oscilloscope, which can actually in itself change the phase so much depending on, um, on your settings. So there's like about, I don't know, 10 different hurdles I would say that can trip you up with making really accurate measurements on AC um, with AC. So, would you like me to go through each piece? Um, what is the what is the the number one flaw of measurement you run into all the time when you see other people taking measurements? What's ha that what's the number one? Um, it's the power factor. It's it's understanding the phase difference between the voltage and the current. Um, if you've got um, the true RMS meters or, or any type of multimeter, you cannot get phase difference. 
if you've got an oscilloscope and you can put voltage and you can put current on the oscilloscope that's still no guarantee that the phase difference that you're looking at between the voltage and the current is correct and it's the difference imagine this imagine if you've got zero degrees phase difference between the voltage and the current so in theory you're getting maximum power if you've got 90 degrees phase difference between voltage and current you've got zero power right now if your phase is off if you've got say 90 degrees or 80 degrees or 70 degrees this is making a huge difference to your output power it goes between maximum power and no power whatsoever and so you've got to totally get a handle on that and that's all about trying to make sure that the voltage um, uh, oscilloscope readings are in alignment and correct with the current measurements on the oscilloscope and then you need to actually do some maths functions in order to get a true power measurement it's not enough to just multiply voltage by current you need to get the whole thing on the oscilloscope and do it properly so how do I take an instrument like this current and voltage probe and make sure they're reading accurately especially if we're dealing with mo like a low frequency and a high frequency because that's going to change the phase right mm -hmm. so how, how, how do you go about calibrating that before you start measuring yeah so before you take any system to try and measure for example the power in and the power out you do need to calibrate your voltage probe to your current probe to your oscilloscope so this is the way I would do it I would always start with a resistor maybe say a 50 or 100 ohm resistor and I would hook that directly up to a, a waveform generator just put a very simple sine wave in um, let's say you're working it uh, I don't know 100 kilohertz or something um, then you need to make sure that your voltage and current are in phase at 100 kilohertz if you're working across a range of frequencies let's say from um, 10 kilohertz to 1 megahertz you need to run a waveform generator from between those two frequencies and make sure that your voltage and your current probe have zero degrees phase difference between the two because in theory you should get zero degrees phase difference across a resistor if you're doing that that means you're getting your, your you've got your settings correct on the oscilloscope then you can actually take your voltage and your current probe and do some measurements on the system if what you're measuring has a bunch of inductance and capacitance does that play a role on your phasing or your calibration is calibration and then you go at it with your measurement and you ignore all of those factors um, yeah I, I would tend to say you want to make sure on your calibration uh, on your resistor I, I personally I just assume that the non-wire wound uh, resistor uh, you should get a, a zero degrees phase difference between voltage and current across the frequency range that's right yeah and okay. but there's a, there's a there's an additional check you can do on this okay which is using a, a, a thermal power probe now in this situation what you can do now a thermal power probe is effectively a resistor with a temperature monitor next to it and so as the um, power warms the resistor up the temperature probe will uh, actually make a, a power measurement now this is just about the most valuable piece of equipment you can imagine because you suddenly don't need to worry about voltage and phase and current and oscilloscopes you can actually just measure raw power which has been created by the heating of a resistor so this is an unbelievable piece of equipment for calibration because what you can do is you can make measurements of voltage and current going to a resistor uh, in this case the resistor is inside the thermal power probe okay and you'll be able to calculate the power let's say it's I don't know 100 milliwatts of power which is shown on your um, thermal power probe which goes to a piece of software on a, on a PC so you know that you're um, like dissipating yeah you're dissipating 100 milliwatts of power into that resistor you know that right if your voltage and your current meters on your oscilloscope are showing you that you've got zero degrees phase difference and you're calculating 100 milliwatts of power you're good you're good to go and if you can do that across the full frequency range I mean this 
this probe here will go from DC to 18 gigahertz. If you, if you, if you can absolutely know that these two, voltage and current, are giving you the same as your thermal power probe, you're in business. You know that you're going to be creating some good quality power measurements. Very good. So I guess we'll take one of these one at a time. Mm -hmm. We already started here. We'll go into more depth and we'll talk about each one independently.